Today, we are back at John Kufleitner's to take a look at this 1971 Dodge Charger. But before we take the tour, welcome to What It's Like. This channel, we feature the classics, vintage, some exotics, lots of orphan cars, and cars that are off the beaten path. And if that sounds like something that interests you, I'd invite you to hit that subscribe button, turn on the bell icon next to it to never miss a video. Let's talk 1971 Dodge lineup. By 1971, Dodge had a lot of cars on offer. The Colt was at the bottom, and then the rest of them aren't really in a particular order. Demon, Dart, Cornet, Charger, Polara, Monaco, Challenger. And then they offered lots of variations of wagons and even a van. Let's talk Dodge Charger. The Dodge Charger for 1971, actually from 1971 to 1974, was considered the third generation, and it was modified on the Chrysler B platform to meet the new emission standards and safety regulations offered in six different packages or flavors, whichever term you prefer. Coupe, hardtop, 500 series hardtop, 500 series Super B, 500 Series SE or Special Edition Hardtop, Road and Track Series or RT Series. And the reason Charger had so many body styles is because for 1971, the Cornet, which the Charger was mostly based off of, wasn't offered as a two-door anymore. It was only offered as a four-door and a four-door wagon. Six different flavors, a lot to take in. I'm going to break it all down for you. So the coupe and the hardtop was basically the base model, and it was aimed at the Cornet buyers. Standard Charger came with a bench seat, front and rear, bought for less money in 1971. $2,707 was the basement price for a Charger. For comparison, in 1967, cheapest basement model price was $3,128, which is... $421 difference or $3,005.31 in 1971 dollars. Moving up to the Charger 500, intermediate between the base and the RT models, final bucket seats and wheel lip moldings. That's what it offered that was different than the coupe and the hardtop. Moving up to the next trim was the Charger Super B. This trim was plucked from the Cornette line. It offered rally suspension and a floor shift, but it kept the bench seat. Moving to the Charger SE or the Charger Special Edition, this trim focused on performance rather than luxury. It offered split cloth and vinyl seats, an electric clock. Also, I believe it's the only trim that had the hidden headlights or the pop-up headlights. Next, at the top, was the Charger RT, the pure performance model. Came standard with the 440 Magnum front bucket seats blacked out hood, heavy duty brakes, and the RT handling package. All right, moving on to specs, 206 inches long. It rides a wheelbase of 115 inches, 76.9 inches wide, 52.6 inches tall. Price, the price started at $2,707 and could go up to $3,775, which is equivalent to you spending $19,000. $23.90 up to $26,947.81, which is a bargain. Anyway, production, total Dodge production in 1970 was, was 551,386 units, of which total charger production was 82,114. And of that number, our car is a 500 series hardtop. They made 11,000 948 of those. 1971 averages. The average income was $10,600. The average cost of a house was $25,250 and gas cost 40 cents a gallon. Moving to the engine segment. Lots of different engines Dodge offered for the Charger for 1971. The base engine, there was actually two base engines. The first one was an inline six cylinder, 225 cubic inch displacement, 3.7 liters, made 145 brake horsepower at 4,000 RPM. The bore was 3.4 inches, stroke was 4.1 inches. It was wrapped in a cast iron block. Compression was 8.4 to one, had four main bearings, and it was fed with a single carburetor. Moving to the second option 
as free. 318 V8, which our car has, it's 5.2 liters, 230 brake horsepower at 4,400 RPM. The bore was 3.9, the stroke was 3.3 inches, compression 9 to 1, 5 main bearings, wrapped in a cast iron block, 2 barrel carburetor. Moving up, 383 V8, that's 6.3 liters, 275 brake horsepower at 4,400 RPM. The bore was 4.3 inches, stroke was 3.4 inches, compression 9.2 to 1, 5 main bearings, wrapped in a cast iron block, 2 barrel carburetor. Okay, moving up to the two biggest and baddest engines offered in 1971, the 440 Magnum V8. It was 7.2 liters. It made 370 brake horsepower at 4,800 RPM. Bore was 4.3 inches. Stroke was 3.8 inches. Compression was 9.7 to 1. Had five main bearings. It was all wrapped in a cast iron block with a four barrel carburetor feeding it. And at the top was the optional 426 Hemi V8, seven liters, 425 brake horsepower at 5,600 RPM. Bore was 4.3 inches, stroke was 3.8 inches. Compression was 10.25 to one. Five main bearings. It was fed with two four barrel carburetors, also known as dual quads. Transmissions, three transmissions were on offer, three speed manual, three speed automatic torque flight, and a four speed manual. Let's talk options, not getting into all of the options, but one could order a charger with a Landau roof at no extra cost. Bumper guards, left remote control mirror, deluxe wheel covers, scat pack was available on Charger RT and optional on certain other cars. Some more options are air conditioning, cruise control, and the stereo tape recorder, as well as different wheel covers that you could pick, different radios. Cruise control is the one that I was amazed with. I wonder when, when was the first car that offered cruise control in the comment section below. I know on the old trucks, they had a throttle control, which could act as a primitive cruise control. I'm using air quotes. You can't see me, but I'm using them. It worked virtually the same way, but it was more or less for farmers to operate the PTO system. All right, let's go through this door panel real quick. Nice armrest, door's going away. Nice armrest, place to put change, it's not very big. Door handle to get out, window crank is right here for the big window. Notice there's no vent windows. This has a remote control mirror, but it doesn't operate like a normal, like what we're used to. It's, you have to mess with it a little bit to get it to where you want it to go, but it works really well for the time period. Here's what the sun visors look like. There's no uh, mirror or courtesy lights on the driver's side, passenger side, same way. So notice how this mirror works. You can slide it this way and this way. Got two sliders. On then to the button switches and knobs. Top pullout switch is for the headlights. Right below it is for the wipers and the windshield washer button. Right below that is all the climate controls. Notice this car has AC. Moving to the instrument cluster itself, there are four pods. There's two larger pods followed by two smaller pods. Starting with the large pod on the left-hand side is the speedometer, has an odometer in it. Moving to the right, oil pressure, gasoline. Moving to the right, the smaller pod is the alternator and then the temperature gauge and then the radio is right below that. It's kind of interesting. The radio is not in the middle. Everything is driver oriented. Moving to the right, just to the right of the instrument cluster is where the ashtray is located. This one is equipped with the three speed torque flight and notice it's a floor mounted uh, shift unit. Notice there's like a barrier between you and the passenger. Also has a center console, which is lockable. All right, I'm getting inside. I'm gonna show you what it's like. If you're six foot, I'm six foot two. And this is what I look like inside this car. There is a lot of room in here. My hands fit underneath the steering wheel. 
So this has a locking mechanism to release the key. So when you turn the key on, you can't get the key out unless you push this down, turn this back, and then the key comes out. And this is what the key looks like. When you go to put it on, that slides out of the way so that you can move it back. This one's got a console, an ashtray in the back, and a glove box. That's a glove box situation. Right underneath here, this is your four-way flashers. You just pull it out, and there's a little icon here that flashes. That one's for your right turn signal. This one's for your left turn signal. When I turn the left turn signal on, that light comes on. When I turn the right turn signal on, that light comes on. All right. Notice how long that hood is. Notice the seat belts. Yeah, so those are the front seat belts. Here's the part that they go into. There's a seat belt up here for the driver. All right, I want to show you these vent windows. Not vent windows, but these quarter windows in the back. So that's what they look like. That's how they operate. You have a gasket here for the other window to fit over top of it so it doesn't leak. Okay, the reason I show all these is because every single one is different. So the hood latch, the popper is right here, but you actually pull it in towards the center of the nose and that pops it. There's a secondary latch. I don't know if you can see it, but it's right here on the inside. See, there's the secondary latch. But just to show you, look at how this, there's a, this is a 318 V8. And just look at how much more space you have. It's really close to the firewall back here, but you have all this space in the front. Some other things worth mentioning. Master cylinder, dual, dual reservoir, but no power brakes. There's no power brake booster associated with, with it. This does have power steering though. The power steering's right here. Look at how the look at how the steering shaft comes down inside into the box. On to the pros and cons section. I am getting all these pros and cons from the complete book of collectible cars, Blue Chip Auto Investment, 70 years from 1930 to 2000 by Richard M. Langworth and the Auto Editors of Consumer Guide. And to be 100% fair, the Dodge Charger isn't in that book, but the Challenger is. So I'm pretty sure that most of them would go for either. On the positive side, uncommon pony car, muscle, models, high performance, Smooth styling, probably the nicest on the 70s, strongest club support and collector interest against it. Poor materials and construction quality, rust prone, heavy and thirsty. Real room for only two people. Clean, well-maintained originals are really hard to find. Value appreciation, leveling off but climbing. But I've, these cars are super rare. I've, I've seen more challengers than chargers. And uh, yeah, guys, thank you so much for watching. And until next time, round, round, get around, I get around, you yeah, get around, round, round, I get around. Toodaloo! Something different. I hope you guys liked it. But seriously, toodaloo.